Lewiston girls trying to pull off the upset against the Clarkston Bantams. You guys excited? Yeah! Coug fans didn't let the rain stop them from enjoying a Saturday of college football. Despite the team's worst start in over 10 years, Coach Taylor and the Warriors were able to right the ship and get back to Harris Field as NAIA West champs. It is maybe a fitting end to what's been a tumultuous football season here in Pullman. Mike Leach this morning informed Washington State that after eight seasons, he's leaving. Guys, we're coming to you live once again from Harris Field for another gorgeous day of baseball. The Bantam girls were in the midst of a 7-0 run as they came into the Avista Holiday Tournament looking to defend their title. But in an instant, everything changed. And all Mick could think about in that eighth game was her father's empty seat. Those earlier yeah, storms couldn't know. stop the Palouse Summer League from getting going. You look behind me, it's the Federal Way Knights taking on the Boise Gems. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. George Ball Court has served as the lab where Michaela has spent day after day and year after year perfecting the shot that has terrorized defenses across the Pacific Northwest. Caden's the oldest of 12 kids, and Luther says that now that Caden's made it to the pros, his brothers are all convinced they can make it too. There's a lot of lessons you can learn from the game of basketball, whether it be lessons in leadership or lessons in grit and perseverance. After his first season as head coach of the WNBA's Dallas Wings, Brian Agler, the winningest coach in U.S. women's professional basketball, once again came to Lapway, Idaho, just days before Christmas, to do what he does best. Saturday and Sunday, he held his second annual free Holiday Hoops basketball clinic for girls between 5th and 8th grade. It's sort of the season for giving, and um, I'm grateful for the opportunities I've been given, and I want to try to create some opportunities for other people. For two days, girls from all over North Central Idaho and Eastern Washington had the chance to learn from the two-time WNBA champion who's coached stars like Candace Parker and Skylar Diggins-Smith. My spin dribble, I'm not fully turning and then switching hands because the way I did it made it slower, but now he corrected it and it's 10 times faster. Event organizers with the Nez Perce tribe also want to use the clinic as a place to teach young girls about how to succeed seed in life. We want to make sure that we empower them and we give them the tools that they have to be successful women that will end up being leaders. That includes emphasizing the importance of mental health and overall wellness, especially when some of them come from difficult backgrounds. We have people that live in homes that might struggle with drugs or alcohol, different types of abuse. Before he has them run through a single drill, Coach Agler instructs the girls on the tenets of pig. Preparation, integrity, grit, and gratitude. I think all those are ingredients for excellence to excel or to be successful. So Maliga went through the program last year and came back to help run the camp while striving to be a role model and resource for the other girls. Our culture, we're really like women are the heart and soul. And so like I just want people to look up to us like we're women. We can do everything that everybody else can. Like we can do the same thing as our boys can. In Lapway, Stephen Pimpo, KLEW Sports. It really means the world to me because I cannot imagine what he has gone through with everything. It's just to know that he'll always support me. Like he tries to make me his number one like priority and just it's the best feeling. Clarkston guard Mick Jackson says all she has to do is look for her father Mark in the stands and she knows she can overcome whatever is in her way. For him coaching me like all through my life is just to no matter what to never give up. For the past five years, Mark's life has been a testament to his commitment to that creed. In 2015, doctors discovered a tumor in Mark's brain. One up there that was the size of a darn baseball right here, and it was shutting me down, so it was kind of an emergency surgery to get down to get that taken care of. Since then, Mark has undergone cancer treatment that has included chemotherapy and multiple brain surgeries. But none of that could stop him from watching his daughter take the court for the Bantams. I got a lot of years of uh, fathering and coaching on this one. So I like to go watch her. She goes out there and battles. Which is just one of several things Mick gets from her dad, including her love for the game of basketball. She remembers watching Mark play for a city league team at a young age. It's just 
cool because like, oh, my dad plays basketball. Like, oh, maybe cool if I did. Now the senior is part of a starting five for a Bantams team with legitimate state title aspirations. The Bantam girls were in the midst of a 7-0 run as they came into the Avista Holiday Tournament looking to defend their title. But in an instant, everything changed. And all Mick could think about in that eighth game was her father's empty seat. Mark had to miss that game because of a two-hour surgery to replace a whole section of his skull that was removed due to infection. It was just skin over top of my brain. You could kind of see it pulsating and stuff. The Jacksons expected the procedure to force Mark to miss the rest of the tournament until he saw how distraught Mick was without him there via Facebook Live. Well, she's tough, physically and mentally. And, but of course, the emotions get the best of just about everybody. And uh, watching her in that game when Star went live, um, I knew her head would be a little more clear and more on basketball if I was there for the next game. So just one day after brain surgery, that's exactly where he was. They told me that they were gonna try to make it, but when they did, I was like, that's pretty cool, pretty great. You had a good game that game. Oh, thank you. Mark has regular MRIs as doctors monitor the area where his tumor was. But for both father and daughter, their fighting spirits remain strong. For him coaching me like all through my life is just to, no matter what, to never give up. That's nice. It's just kind of, you know, surreal to say, hey, my son's now playing in the league. Lots of kids grow up wanting to be like their dads. Lots of kids grow up wanting to play pro football. Idaho linebacker Caden Ellis gets to do both. The son of all pro defensive lineman Luther Ellis, football has always been a part of Caden's life. I don't really remember too much. I remember playing with my little action figures during this game. After his career with the Vandals, scouts were buzzing about Caden's elite athleticism and his on-field production to back it up. But during round seven of the NFL draft, Caden was still waiting. Then the New Orleans Saints announced their 244th pick. GM was kind of acting like uh, it was just another one of those calls, and then he kind of, your wait's over. He kind of, he kind of jumped it on me, and uh, man, it was, it was super. I was so glad. I was so happy. While the Detroit Lions made Luther a first-round pick in '95, he still had his own draft day drama. It ended up being me and Warren Sapp sitting back there after a free few picks are gone. You no, know, we're supposed to, both of us are supposed to go in top 10, and we're here we are. But it was nothing compared to going through Cadence. For me, it was the 20th pick, so um, it was a little nail body, but not quite, not even close to being the same when it's your son. Now, father and son join a select NFL group among names like Manning, Matthews, and Shula. To kind of go back and see the Lions pull some stuff, um, kind of get a watch him play. Uh, see, see what he did and, and now have a chance, so um, I'm excited. Caden says there are plenty of elements of his dad's game he's made part of his own. Watching his get off and how hard he struck the O-line. He always told me to arch the center, or the, you know, so to bend them backwards, to break their back. But Luther has always strived to be a father first and a coach second. He spent the last few seasons on the Vandals coaching staff watching Caden and his brother Christian grow up. Develop in character and growth and who they are and what they're becoming and see the good times, the bad times, and be able to walk through that with them. And uh, for sure, there's been more good than bad. He's the best dad in the world, I think. He makes mistakes. <laughs> but um, I think that's kind of what makes it so great, is, is through the mistakes and through the adversity, how do you respond? And it's that mentality that Caden hopes will carry him to the Saints' 53-man roster and beyond. My son's now playing in the league.